Hi, my name is Dvir Yitzchaki. I uh, will talk today about another cool C++ 20 feature, Ranges. Woo! Right. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Uh, so uh, the talk title is uh, 179 range algorithms in less than an hour. Uh, actually, I uh, miscounted and it's uh, 184. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, let's uh, see <laughs> how far we get. Okay, so uh, the idea for the talk came from uh, Jonathan Bokara's 105 uh, STL algorithms in less than an hour. Who saw this talk? Okay, uh, less than half. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, you don't have to, to watch this talk uh, to know what's going on, but uh, on, on this talk, uh, Jonathan uh, draws this uh, map of uh, STL algorithms the world of SCL algorithms, and uh, today we're going to explore the new conquered, law, uh, con conquered lens of, of uh, range algorithms. So uh, about me, I'm, uh, I work at uh, Verizon Media. Uh, occasionally, I, I spoke a few times at the Core C++ Meetup. Uh, as you can uh, see, I'm an uh, 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 XKD, <laughs> sorry, XKCD uh, fan, there's a typo there. Uh, and uh, my handle is at Virts at uh, GitHub, Slack, and Gmail, and it was taken on Twitter, if you want to uh, find me there. Okay, so uh, this is what we'll uh, go over in the next hour. Uh, and let's start with motivation. Yeah, sorry, I uh, exported it from uh, Mac, and the animations are not uh, fully uh, exported. Anyway, uh, so. Why, why are we doing all this? So uh, the main uh, drive for this uh, whole uh, concept is, uh, you know, uh, as, as, as uh, Jason was uh, mentioning, it's, it's an really annoying to, to write begin and end on every uh, algorithm uh, call. So why not just pass the vector as a whole to the algorithm? Also, uh, Having a single object uh, enables us to pass this object through uh, several transformations and uh, sort of uh, building this pipeline of calculations. Don't uh, I go? I will go over this code uh, in detail uh, later. Uh, so we build up this pipeline of transformations and. Uh, enables us to write uh, this uh, expressive and, uh, and uh, succinct code. Okay, so uh, let's uh, go to the basics. Why is a range? So a range is a sequence of elements from two, uh, between two positions, uh, i and k. Usually it's uh, denoted by this uh, half open range, i, k. Now, uh, C++ always uh, had uh, this notion of ranges. Uh, but uh, in the standard library, as, uh, un until uh, C++ 17, a range is basically a pair of iterators. So this is what you, you basically p pass to, to the standard algorithms. But there are more interesting ways we can uh, build ranges. For example, an iterator in account, if you use this copy n, uh, algorithm, you pass it a begin iterator and count of how, how many elements you want to copy. So again, uh, this is a range like for, from a position to 20 positions after. And another example is an iterator and a predicate. If you think, for example, uh, about this ice stream iterator, uh, basically we uh, get an, an iterator to this uh, uh, stream, input stream, and the, the end iterator simply tells us uh, it has a predicate like that which tells us when uh, uh, was the stream uh, ended, basically. So, uh, but, but writing it like this is really hides the, the meaning of, of, of this iterator. But uh, because it has to be the same type as the begin iterator, we need to, uh, to have this, this default constructed iStream iterator. Okay, so 
the range library uh, strives to capture all these concepts into a single one. A bit of history. Uh, this is uh, not an entirely new concept. Boost range uh, was started in uh, November uh, 2004. Uh, by then, it uh, basically only had a couple of concepts. Uh, in range uh, 2.0, uh, they started also getting algorithms and uh, views. And uh, then in uh, tr uh, 2013, Eric Nibbler started working on the version 3, range v3 of, uh, of this uh, library, and not in Boost this time. And uh, quite uh, shortly after, he started uh, proposing it to the standard library. And it, finally, it was merged to the, standard, to the standard in November 2018. So uh, as I said, range v3 by Eric Nibbler is uh, a library which you can use. Uh, it's open source in GitHub. Uh, it's, uh, it supports C++ 11. Uh, but it has other optional features if you use uh, 14 or 17 st standards. Uh, it uses emulated concepts with uh, student enable if, which uh, some of us uh, love, but uh, most of us hate. And uh, it supports fer uh, fairly uh, old compilers, uh, Clang and GCC. MSVC only recently started supporting it. Another uh, library is the CMC STL2 by Casey Carter. Uh, Casey is the editor, the, standard, uh, the editor of the standard ranges, uh, and uh, this basically is the implementation of the ranges as they appear in the standard. Uh, but and it requires a recent uh, GCC version with uh, dash f concepts because it uses C plus plus twenty concepts. Uh, both are available at Compiler Explorer, so you can play with them as you like. Uh, some uh, mention, um, notes about uh, the, this presentation. Um, most algorithms that we'll see are available in C++20, not all of, it, all of them. Those that are not will be denoted by this V3 uh, sign because they are available in range V3. Only a few views have made it to the standard, and those will be denoted by this C++ icon. And the stuff that was proposed but not yet accepted will be denoted with the proposal number. Uh, other than that, uh, I use this copy open paren underscore end close paren to denote the two overloads, copy and copy n. And in most examples, I'm using namespace uh, ranges, but don't try this at home. OK, so what are the concepts that we need four ranges. A question. This is a uh, standard for each algorithm. Does anyone want know what is the return type of for each? Uh, is Bryce here? No. Okay. So I, I didn't know as well until I uh, uh, did this uh, presentation. Excuse me. The last what? No, for each doesn't return anything. It uh, applies a function to uh, the elements of the range. Uh, but it does return the, the function itself. Uh, for example, if uh, the function is uh, a lambda or, uh, or something similar and you want to use it afterwards, you can get it back from the algorithm. But anyway, uh, this is the possible implementation of, of for each I got from CPP reference. And uh, oh, I don't have the highlights here <laughs> as well. OK, uh, so uh, what we can see is uh, this uh, implementation is, is uh, basically how most algorithms look like. So we, we have this first iterator, which signals the, be the beginning of the range the last iterator, and we uh, increment first on each step, and then dereference it to get the value. This is what we do with first, and finally, we check, uh, we run this algorithm until first equals last. So 
what we are doing with less is simply only uh, comparing it to first, right? Okay, remember this, we'll go, come back to it later. So, as we said, we need an iterator. What's an iterator? It's a type that can be referenced and incremented, right? There are uh, several types of iterators. Input iterator, which is something we can read. Output, write to. Forward, meaning we can uh, pass multiple times on this uh, range, on the, on the range that starts with this iterator. Bidirectional, we can go back, and random access, we can go to wherever, wherever we want. Uh, standard ranges add another kind of iterator, a contiguous iterator, which means that the memory the iterator, the iterator points to is contiguous, like a std array, a std vector, for example. And uh, this is important for having algorithms uh, which uh, can uh, be more efficient if they know uh, the, the contents are contiguous. For example, mem copying or it or something. Okay. So uh, a new concept is sentinels. Sentinel is what replaces the end iterator. So formally, it's a type, a semi-regular type, which we can compare to the iterator. Remember, we saw that what for each does with less, it simply compares it to the, to the iterator. So this is what uh, we require. And we can increment the iterator and get one step closer to the end. OK, so the sentinel is the concept, but we also call such an S sentinel. So examples of sentinels, pair of iterators. OK, we, can know, we know that we can compare any two iterators of the same uh, container. Also, we can have an iterator and a predicate and store the predicate in the sentinel. And on each compare, simply ask the predicate, are we at the end yet? And the third example is an iterator in a count. When we store the count in the, we store the distance to the end in the, in the iterator and on each comparison, check if the count is zero, and then we know we are at the end. So if you recall, we uh, talked about three types of ranges which we want to uh, encapsulate in one concept. Sentinels enables us this. Formally, a range uh, is a type which allows iterating over its elements. So we, we said we need an iterator, and this is what we get from calling ranges begin on the range, and a sentinel which we get from calling ranges end. And there, there is another uh, concept called counter range, which is still an iterator in account because we still have copy n also in the ranges uh, library. Uh, I guess for compatibility reasons. Uh, similarly to the iterator concepts, we have uh, parallel range concept, which means that the begin iterator of the, of the range is the, res uh, the respective uh, iterator concept. Okay, so input, output, forward, and you can see examples of uh, containers which are of these types. And another uh, concept is common range. This is a range where the sentinel is the same type as the iterator. It's the iterator. Okay, it doesn't have to be, but if it does, for example, all the standard containers are common range. Other interesting concepts, sized sentinel. This is a sentinel which you can uh, decrement the iter iterator from and get the distance between them. And the sized range, which is a range which you can call range size on and uh, get the size in a constant time. Now, it doesn't mean that the iterator of this, uh, sorry, the sentinel of this range is size sentinel. Think, for example, on std list. Std list knows its size at constant time, but the end iterator of it is uh, only bidirectional. It does, you can't decrement the iterator uh, from it. 
But anyway, uh, there is also range distance, which you can uh, get uh, the size of any range, but it can be uh, linear, linear time if the, if the range is not sized. And uh, ranges data, which uh, on contiguous ranges gives you the pointer to the memory. Okay, so uh, let's start up talking about what algorithms are available in the uh, ranges library. So uh, there are a couple of differences, uh, several differences between the range algorithms and the classic STL algorithms. Range algorithms accept either a range object, a single range object, or a pair of iterator and sentinel, or an iterator and account, for example, all the uh, algorithms which end is with underscore n. They are constrained, meaning that they use concepts. Okay, the, who doesn't uh, know uh, con uh, standard concepts for C++ 20? Okay, uh, you, you don't have to, to, to know this for, for this talk, but anyway, it's good to know that they are constrained. The compiler checks on the point of call to the algorithm that we pass it the correct types. If the algorithm requires a bi uh, bi-directional uh, range, we can't pass it an input range, for example. They accept projections, which we'll talk about it later. And there are some return type changes between the new uh, algorithms and the old ones. And there are no parallel overloads. Okay, if, uh, if you know, uh, C++17 has parallel algorithms, but currently uh, no uh, range algorithm can run in parallel. So this is what uh, ranges for each looks like. Again, I had a hi highlighting in, <laughs> in my uh, presentation, but never mind. Um, okay, so what we can see here, maybe this works. Yeah, cool. So uh, we can see we have this iterator and the sentinel pair uh, algorithm, an algorithm which takes an, an, an input range. Um, it also takes a function which is uh, have its own concept. The projection, again, I'll talk about it later in detail. And the uh, return type is now for each result instead of uh, just a function. This is uh, for each result. It has the function as before, but also an iterator. Why an iterator? Because the, uh, we only had a sentinel before, right? It, we, when we called this algorithm, we sent it a sentinel, which is not the same type as the, as the iterator. If we do want the end iterator, this is what uh, I will be, uh, in will be, sorry. Okay, so in will, at the end of the algorithm, in will point to the end of the algorithm, and it's, it's, also, it's of the same type as the iterator. As the iterator. Okay. <laughs> this is an example of uh, how we use it. I have uh, two large uh, fingers. Okay. Uh, so, <clears throat> we have a function which increments this sum. We have a vector of some numbers, and we call for each on the vector. What we will get, again, we'll get this struct, result struct. Uh, the in, as we said, will point to the end of, of, of the iterator, and the sum will be 12, because this is the sum of the elements of the range. And we also have the, uh, the function in fun, and if we'll call it again it, with one, it will add one to the sum and the sum will be 30. Okay, so let's go over which algorithms we have in ranges. We have fill, which fills a range with a constant value. IOTA takes an initial value and increments it on each step. And generate, which takes a function 
and uses it to generate the elements of the range. Okay, it calls the function repeatedly and puts its return value in the range. After we have a range, we can change the order of the elements. For example, we can use uh, next permutation to move to the next permutation in the sorted list of all permutations. We can go back with permutation. We can reverse the range, rotate it, and shuffle its elements. We can transform the range in several ways. We can copy it to, a, to another range. We can copy only elements which satisfy some condition, like with copy if. We can copy elements which don't satisfy the condition by remove if. We can replace uh, certain values with other values or uh, certain elements which satisfy some predicate. We can uh, remove duplicate elements with unique. Move uh, is like copy, except it use sudmove move to move the elements to the new range. Move backward does it with uh, the backward order. order. Swap range ranges moves one to the other and vice versa. Sample uh, gives us a random a uh, sample of the uh, input range. Shift left and shift right does what they say they do. <laughs> do what they say they, they do, sorry. Uh, transform applies a function to each element and gives us the output. We can also transform two ranges with binary function. For each, as we said, applies the function to each element, and for each end to account of the elements. We can check all kinds of properties on the range. All of checks if all of the elements satisfy this, this property, or any of them with any of or, or none of them. We can query all kinds of things about the values in the range. We can get the minimum, max, or both. We can count how many times a value appears and how many elements satisfy a certain condition. We can search through the range. Notice if it, even if it's not sorted. We can find an element or an element that satisfies the condition or not satisfied. We can search for a range of uh, elements. We can find the last occurrence of such range. We can find any two uh, duplicate uh, values and uh, look for uh, repeats of some value. And finally, find one, the first occurrence of one of several values. We can compare ranges equal, checks if they're equal, if permutation does they have the same element, but maybe in a different order. We can compare it, uh, compare them lexicographically, and find the first position which is not equal with mismatch. Heaps. If you recall, a heap is a binary tree where the parent is uh, larger than is than its uh, children. Make heap takes a range and arrange, arrange, rearranges it to uh, be a heap. Push heap, we can add another uh, push back some value and push heap will move it to the right location. Pop heap takes the head, which is the maximum, and moves it to the back. Again, rearranging the elements to keep the heap properties. Is heap simply tells us whether, whether a range is a heap or not. And is heap until finds the first uh, position where the heap uh, property is broken. Okay, so until this position, this is a heap. We can use uh, heaps to sort by simply 
moving uh, the maximum to the end on each iteration, or simply use sort in stable sort to, to sort the elements. Stable sort means that uh, equal uh, elements keep their uh, relative order in the input uh, range. We can use partial copy to copy uh, to sort the, the uh, part of the of the range until some position, and nth elements, which simply tell us which element uh, moves the one one element to 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 this position, uh, as if the range was sorted. And this sort tells us whether the range is sorted or not. And again, it's sorted until tells us until which point the range is sorted. We can also we have uh, algorithms for merge sort. We can merge two sorted ranges into one, and input merge merge them in place. Two halves of the of the same range. Uh, partitioning is also a, a method used for, for sorting. We can uh, partition a range, meaning that we move all elements satisfying some condition to one side and all the others to the other side. We can query if a range is partitioned already and find the partition point. After a range is sorted, we can use binary search on it. Lower bound finds the uh, first position uh, not greater than some value. Upper bound finds the first position which is greater than the value. And equal range gives us the value in between, which are, are the values that equal to the input value. Uh, binary search simply tells us whether the value is there or not, but it doesn't give us the position. We have all kinds of algorithms on regions. We can use union, intersection, difference, set, di set difference, uh, symmetric difference, and check if one of them includes the other. Numeric algorithms accumulate to sum the values of a range. Partial sum gives us the range of all the partial uh, uh, summation values. And exclusive scan, which is similar, but uh, does, uh, doesn't include the, OK, so, so, so the first uh, element is the initial value. The second will be initial plus the first element. The third will be this, this result plus the, the second element. So it doesn't include the third element from here, if you understand what I mean. Uh, this is ex exclusive scan. Inner product uh, multiplies elements of uh, two ranges and sum the result. And the just difference counts the, um, calculates the difference between each uh, consecutive uh, elements. All, all, all algorithms until now assume that the output range is already uh, constructed. Otherwise, if it's only if it's uninitialized, we have uninitialized memory algorithms. We can default construct the memory. We can fill it with some value. We can copy values of other range to this uninitialized memory. We can also move it and destroy, finally destroy the range and get back to an initialized memory. OK, these are all the range algorithms. So uh, projections, what do we need? So uh, take the classic example of uh, an employee struct with first and last names. We have, uh, let's say we have a vector of such employees and we want to sort it by last name. So in the classic uh, standard library, what do, what do we do? We need to provide it some comparator to compare the employees by their last names, right? But now we want to search it. We want to find whether Nibbler is in the range or not. So we would use a lower bound, which is a binary searcher. And again, we need to provide it uh, a comparator because we want to, to compare by last names. But now it's a bit of a different comparator because it only compares 
uh, the last name of, of some element to nibbler, right, to a string. So we have two different comparators, which basically means the same thing. And uh, since we have two implementations, they can uh, get different over time. It's, it's hard to, <clears throat> to manage, and it's also repeating ourselves. So projection is uh, some transformation that an algorithm applies before inspecting values of elements. And uh, to explain what, what I mean, this is the, a possible implementation of ranges for each. You see it takes a projection, which is by default simply identity, returns what it uh, gets. But we can give it a mother uh, function. And the implementation invokes this projection on each element before, for example, calling fun for for each. So let's see an example. Uh, returning to the first, to the, to this uh, employees, we can simply now have a single projection get last, which given an employee gives us his last name, and then pass it to both algorithms to uh, have the same effect. Sort by the last name and search by last name. So we don't have code duplication. In this case, we can even do better. We can simply give the pointer to the last member, uh, sorry. a pointer to this uh, member in the struct. And it, ha it will have the same effect of giving us the last names. Views. So this is a, a new concept which was not uh, in the standard library until now. View is a range that has constant time copy, move, and assignment operators. And if you think about it, it means that it, it doesn't own its elements. If, it would, if uh, it would own them, that it, it would have to copy them on the copy constructor. But since it doesn't own them, it, it can be a constant time copy. Sorry about that. Uh, examples. So a range that is just a pair of iterators to some other range. For example, string view, which Jason mentioned. Uh, a range which holds its element by share pointer and shares ownership with all its copies. A range which generates its elements on demand, so it doesn't hold anything. And we'll see an example of this. Note that most containers are not views, okay, because they don't have constant time copy. This is a empty view, one of the views in the C twenty standard library. Okay, it uh, has beginning and end, like any range. In this case, it's a common range because they have the same type, T star. It has data because it's contiguous. It's empty, so it's contiguous. And it has size because it's a size range. It's know, it knows its size in constant time, zero. OK, so uh, yeah. Another concept is uh, factories and adapters. Each view has an object, which is called a uh, factory if it creates a view, or adapter if it takes some range and adapts it to a view. And uh, for example, for empty, we have this uh, empty in view namespace, which creates an empty view. Adaptive views are lazy, meaning they will only generate their elements on demand. That means that it is possible to have infinite ranges. And we'll see examples of these too. Uh, other concepts, a forwarding range is a range uh, when, which, when you get an iterator from this range, you can destroy the range and the iterator will still be valid. Again, because it points to some other range, which is still valid. And a viewable range is a range which you can view. You can pass it to this adapter, these adapters. So it, it's either a view 
already or forwarding range. Okay, for, for example, a reference to a range is forwarding because you can destroy just the reference, but the original range keeps living. So what views do we have? As we saw, we have empty view. We have view single, which uh, holds a single element. And view all, which views all the elements of some range. Repeat uh, repeats this value infinitely. OK? Notice these uh, three dots. You can keep calling it, and will, it will keep giving you the same value. Or you can uh, tell it to repeat only for some count. Unbound, it takes an iterator and increments it on each step, and get indefinitely. And counted starts from some position and uh, move forward for some uh, pretty fine count. IOTA, like before, starts with some initial value and keeps incrementing it on each step. Linear distribute takes start and an end value and give you all the values in between linearly distributed. And generate takes any function and uh, any function which returns something and keeps calling it to generate new values. Uh, IOTA has uh, several uh, interesting overloads. By default, it starts from zero to infinite. You can give it some starting value or starting start and an end. And it's a uh, 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 half open range, so the end is not uh, part of the range. Closed IOTA does have the end as part of the range. It's a closed range. Int is a, an alias for IOTA if the type is integral. IOTA can take any type which you can increment. If it's an integral, you can simply call it int. And closed instances is the alias of closed IOTA for integral types. And there's also indices which, when given a value, gives you all the values from 0 to this, until this input value. There, a, uh, there are views of strings. Uh, you can take a string literal and get a view of, of the characters of it, or a string pointer. You can, uh, you, uh, using some regu regular expression, get all the sub-matches, one after the other. You can remember uh, iStream iterator. Now you don't need it. You have iStream view, which simply keeps generating some types from this view, from this uh, stream. And get lines, which, given a delimiter, which is by default backslash n, gives you lines from this stream. You can take a range and filter it uh, with view filter. Simply gives you all the elements which satisfy some condition. The elements which don't satisfy a condition take, take this prefix or uh, the prefix of all elements satisfying some condition by take while. Uh, drop uh, drops this prefix and leaves only the rest of the range and tail, which drops the first element. The limit gives you the, all the elements until some, some, uh, some value is, uh, is found. And sample, again, gives you, uh, like the algorithm, a uh, sample of the, of the input range, a random sample. You can slice uh, part of the range uh, by start and end positions, or take all the uh, elements uh, in uh, uh, constant uh, strides. You can drop uh, duplicates with the view unique, or drop uh, duplicates by some uh, predicate with these two. We, can, uh, we have uh, set views, again, lazy set uh, algorithms. Cartesian product text. Uh, sets are sorted. 
uh, are assumed to be sorted. So it simply compares all the iterators and gives you uh, an, a one of them or, or none of them, depending on the, the algorithm. Um, Cartesian product takes uh, multiple ranges and gives you a range of tuples of all the combinations of elements from these ranges. You can take a range and uh, convert it to mul multiple ranges by, for example, chunking, chunking it into equal sized chunks, or get a sliding window over the range. Okay, so the first uh, range begins at the first element, the second, the second, etc. You can split a range by some value some uh, delimiter, and uh, groups or uh, sub-ranges all having the same value. Uh, you can go back from multiple ranges to a single range with view concat, concatenates the input ranges, or if you have a range of ranges, you can call join on it also to concatenate it. Optionally, you can also add some delimiter in between the different parts or some range in between. Zip takes uh, multiple ranges and gives you, again, a range of tuples. But this time, each tuple has, uh, the first tuple has all the first elements, the second, the second elements, and so forth. After this, you can uh, call zip with to reduce uh, the range of tuples to a, to a range of elements by applying some function on the tuple uh, elements. Again, tuple views, uh, you can project on the first elements, the second of each tuple, the third, etc with view elements, and uh, elements zero and one have uh, special aliases, keys, and values. So if you think, so, for example, you can treat std map as a range of pairs, right? The key and the value. So using, using these views, you can get all the keys of the map or the values with a, a single range. Transforming a view, uh, a range <coughs> with view mu, uh, you can move the elements, you can reverse the order, replace values, enumerate, gives you a range of pairs where the first is the, simply the index of the element in the input range. You can take the address of each uh, element or vice versa. Can you hear me well? I think I'm, okay. uh, or after, vice versa, uh, given a range of pointers, do reference them all with view indirect. You can get a constant const view of the elements and transform them, transform the elements using some uh, some function. It's a range. Uh, what do you need to copy? Uh, it, it, it basically uh, it, it generates uh, a new range with all the elements of the. I mean, you could you can use simply the the previous range uh, if I understood you correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Transform uh, doesn't. Yeah, all, all the views don't change the the. I mean, except except for move, maybe. Uh, most of them don't change the elements of the improved range. They create a new range uh, on demand as you iterate iterate them.
Sorry? No, uh, what, what's constant is copying a view, not, cop not using a view to copy elements of a range. So copying the view object is constant time. Not applying a view on some other, some other range, okay? Producing a view is constant time, but iterating it is not. Uh, producing a view doesn't do anything, basically. It simply creates some, uh, some object when, which when, when you iterate it over it, it will generate the values on demand. It produces a new view, but it still doesn't do any work. It do it lazily when you iterate the result. Intersperse takes a, an input value and pushes some value between each two uh, adjustment elements. And cycle uh, repeats the range indefinitely in a cycle. There are also numeric views, partial sum, same as the algorithm, and exclusive scan as well. There are some utility views. Uh, remember the concept of common range. You can take any range and turn it to a common range by uh, using view common, as it's called in the standard, or view bounded is the name in range v3. It was changed during the st standardization. And finally, any view is like the std function of views. It's a type of rest views, view, which you can use to, uh, for example, store a view as a member of a class. Store any view as a member of a class. Okay, uh, who uses Python? Okay, it has this cool feature uh, called list comprehensions. Now we can also have it in C++ using view for each. So for example, uh, we can, given some input uh, range, generate a range of all the squares with this uh, example. Yield simply uh, creates a, a single view. So it takes this single square and generates a range from it. You can also call yield from to generate a range. The, uh, view for each at the end concatenates all these ranges. All, I mean, on each iteration it creates another range and finally concatenate them all to get a single range. Yield if uh, conditionally, yield some value, and lazy yield if, uh, do it lazily, basically. Um, yeah, so uh, one thing I didn't mention about this uh, definition of uh, ranges for each is this safe iterator T. What's it, what, what is the purpose of, uh, of this type? It uh, enables enable us to write safer code. So this is the definition of safe iterator T. If the range is forwarding, that it will give you an iterator. Otherwise, it will give you, I'm sorry it's a cut, but it, it gives you a type called dangling, which you can dereference, cannot dereference. So uh, let's see an example. If you have a function returning a vector and you pass it to some algorithm, this vector will be destroyed after calling the algorithm. So you wouldn't want to the reference, the iterator, which you get back, right? So what it does, it gives you this dangling type, which you cannot dereference. It, will, it won't compile. If you save the vector uh, before calling the, the algorithm, then there's no problem. It, it will give you an iterator, which you can dereference, because the vector is still alive. Or if you give it a view, which is also a forwarding range, again, this, this original vector is still alive, and so you can still get an iterator to it. 
Uh, finally, uh, we talked about projections. You can ask yourself, maybe you can simply use view transform to take all the employees, transform them to get the last names. Sorry, it's the first in this example. But anyway, uh, to get all the first names and then search for a name inside. But the difference is it, that what this will return is an iterator to a range of strings, not a range of employees. OK, because we already transformed the range to, to a range of strings of the first names. But in this example, using a projection, it will give us an iterator to the original range of employees. Finally, how do we compose this, uh, these uh, views? So there's a bitwise op or operator defined on all range adapters and factories. It has the same semantics as uh, calling the adapter and passing the range as the first algorithm. And we'll see an example. Um, we want to calculate the sum of the first count squares. We call IOTA1, which gives us all the integers from 1 to infinite. Then we call view transform to, tr to, take, to calculate the square of each one. And finally, uh, take exactly the first count of them. And then we have a range of squares and we pass it to accumulate uh, algorithm to get the sum of squares. Okay, all this using the, this uh, piping operator. It's lazily, but uh, since you call take exactly count, it means it will stop after this count of elements. So uh, it won't generate the integers after the first count. So you only use only 30, uh, like if you call it with 10, it will generate only 10 integers. <laughs> because you stop iterating it. This is how we can write it with a regular fraction call syntax, but as you can see, it's much less readable than this example. Um, finally, uh, after you did this, all this transformation, sometimes you do want to store the results of a view in a container. So this is what this two function does. It takes some top of a container and uh, generates this container with the elements that you calculated before. Uh, there is, but I think we won't <laughs> be able to, to get there in time. Okay. Uh, how much time do I have? Nothing? Uh, okay, just maybe one minute. Okay, these are actions you can, they're not in the standard. You can check uh, about them uh, later online. So, uh, what are the chances that I can click on it? Yeah, okay, so you can wonder what is the performance of all this beautiful code, and uh, maybe uh, think that it will be less optimal than doing it by hand, for example. So I have here Compiler Explorer, Explorer Live. I didn't uh, save it or anything. And you can see it generates a function with no loops, and when calling it in main with giving it some number, for example, eight, it can calculate the value at compile time and simply return the, the result from main. So it, it's, uh, the compiler can see behind all this, this code and understand what, what we meant when we wrote it. One more slide. Okay, we don't have time for questions, but thank you.